nine, number nine. You know the guy from Mad Magazine, Alfred E. Newman? Uh, that's his uh, name. And uh, that magazine was especially popular in the late 1950s. So when Fred Astaire was having a variety show, someone thought it would be a good idea if someone would dance around all done up like Alfred E. Newman. And check this out. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. That's the creepiest mask I've ever seen. I know it. It's very realistic. It seems kind of ahead of its time for yeah. 1959. Oh, dear. Wait, is Fred Astaire opening your man's clip? I believe so. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Wow. We were <laughs> 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 Worrying can't get you anywhere. <laughs> he bought a little hot rod coupe last year. Then he chopped the top and he lowered the rear. Does 90 miles an hour and it shimmies and shakes. Look out! Listen, the woman might as well not even be there because I can't take my eyes off of Alfred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the first, too. <laughs> wow. Well, that's something. So I guess uh, this is not the song that was playing during the broadcast. People have edited it, so it would be good. I had, I'd be worth seeing that again tomorrow with a yeah. different song. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Well, look at Just you producing from the yeah. set. I'm sure yeah. Terry's taking all kinds of notes yeah. right now. Oh, believe yeah. me, it's a big <laughs> uh, pot to yeah, fill. Yeah. I'm sure he's happy all for right. the suggestion. Uh, number eight, if you have the money to buy a new car, you might want to consider Volvo's <laughs> overseas delivery program. It comes with two round-trip flights to Gothenburg, Sweden, <coughs> which is where Volvo's factory is. Once you land in Sweden, you'll be picked up at the airport and taken to your hotel. The program covers two nights there. On the first morning, you'll be driven to Volvo's factory, get a Swedish lunch, and a visit to the Volvo Museum. Then you get your new car, and you can take it on a European vacation. Volvo gives you registration and insurance coverage for 14 days. After the vacation, you bring the car back to the factory where you picked it up, or there are 13 other drop-off locations in other European countries. Then, Volvo <laughs> will ship your car to your U.S. dealer. That will take about six to 13 weeks. What? If you're wondering why Volvo uh, does this, it costs foreign automakers more to ship a new car to the U.S. than a used car. Huh. If you go over to Sweden and drive it around, it becomes a used uh, car when they ship it to you. Well, Interesting. well, well. Uh, well. How about that? All right, number seven. Tea parties are more popular than ever before. Here's why, in case you haven't already guessed, Bridgerton. Yeah, People want to experience a little bit of the Regency era for themselves, and tea parties are the closest thing they can get without taking a flight to England. It's all about the elegance, the beauty of little cakes and scones, and who could resist those tiny little sandwiches? Not only that, you can dress up fancy and spend the day gossiping with your friends, just like you're a member of the actual Bridgerton family. Boy, that's fun. How yeah. about a morning show tea party? Ooh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's not the reaction I, I'm busy I that expected. Day. <laughs> Only if there will be pantaloons and crumpets. <laughs> <laughs> and number six, and while we're on the subject of Bridgerton, uh, bustier and corsets are trending. They're all over the place, from Amazon to Love Shack Fancy. So what's the difference between a bustier and a corset? Uh, glad you asked. A corset will hold your waist in tighter in order to provide better curves. Oh, For I example, uh, Nicola Coughlin wore several different corsets on the show to enhance her curvy hourglass figure. They often extend further down and end just below the rib cage. Okay. Oftentimes, a woman needs help lacing her corset and tightening it. It can also make it hard to breathe. Okay. Bustiers are a bit different. For one thing, they're easier to wear. They're huh. designed to create a boost in the bust, so they're shorter in length. They'll boost in the bust. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Glad they had you reading that. Did you yeah. learn a little something? Larry? I certainly did. All right. Yeah. All right. Number five. Have you heard of hypergamy? It's a big deal in the uh, dating trends uh, right now. It essentially means dating up or dating for luxury that's usually about money, uh, dating for wealth. Uh, but here's where it gets a little bit weird. A recent poll says people find it luxurious if their date learns more about them, like what they do for a living, what they like to do for fun. It can lead to more in-depth in -depth conversations. Another quote-unquote luxury when the person who asks for the date also pays for everything. That's a luxury? Yeah. 
that's kind of standard, I think. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. All right, keep going. Sorry. Uh, another luxurious favorite, feeling swept off their feet with over-the-top, grandiose gestures. Ah. That was just essentially a script where you just described what dating is. <laughs> In essence, <laughs> but everything has to have a new term. Like, yeah. I don't know what this hyperdating mean. What does that mean? Hyper dating? Hyper? I, I really don't quite get that one. It just described dating, <laughs> getting to know the person you're on a date with. Yeah. And with luxury. as my grandmother used to say. It's just as easy to fall in love with a rich man as it is a poor man. Yeah. So they're uh -huh. saying, you know, get, just yeah. cast a wide net. Yeah. yeah, how's your track record on uh, that? Yeah. Fire up. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you don't listen to the old people no. when you should. Right. Uh, all right, number four, Patrick. Uh, here is some art by Masataka Shishido. Oh, yeah. Oh. He goes by DJ Do on Instagram. Some of these sculptures can be used <laughs> as change purses. Others look oh. like alive, oh. blinking faces. <laughs> that might give you nightmares. Wow. Oh, oh man. Wow. A little horrifying. Yeah. How about a warning? <laughs> Oy. Wow. Okay. Uh, four nostril nose. Yeah. yeah. Creepy. Huh. All right. Number three, it looks like something out of a medieval movie set, but it is not. This is the Tower of Bog Goat, and it's right here in Illinois. What? You can find it in the town of Windsor, three and a half hours from Chicago. Ooh. The 30-foot tall goat tower is owned by Dave and Marcia Johnson. The rounded staircase is designed so that each goat can reach its apartment. Dave Johnson was inspired after seeing the picture of a winery in South Africa with spiral steps and lots of goats. If you want to visit, you can, but you must contact the Johnsons sure. first. They won't mm. accept any unannounced visitors. Well, let's get the Johnsons on the Zoom this week. Right? And, yeah, that's fun. See what's going on yeah, that's there. A, that's a road trip there. Yeah. Do the goats know which apartment is theirs? Do oh, they? Yeah. of course yeah. they do. Yeah, imagine the hours you could spend watching. Hi, right? Standing outside. Mm. Look at that. Huh. All right, number two. In 1961, Goodyear invented tires that glow. Automakers at that time were looking at all sorts of flashy gadgets they could add to cars, and two chemists at Goodyear created a polyurethane compound which allowed them to make tubeless tires wow. that could be dyed all sorts of colors. That's One of Goodyear's cool. managers said Goodyear's translucent tire could be produced in any color to match the car, or perhaps the wife's new outfit. Someday a wife might tell a husband, Charlie, go out and change the tires. I'm wearing my blue dress tonight. See? But there were several problems. The biggest was that they were really expensive to make, and also they didn't do well in the rain, and they could actually melt if the car was driven yeah. too hard. It's a bit of a problem. Why did your housewife sound like James Keg? I don't know. I only have so many voices, yeah. and I... Yeah. I don't know what my... Is, I'm supposed to do that Catherine yeah. Hepper dear. Yeah. I have the dinner ready, dear. I gotta... I, Come on. Don't practice. Do you show up to rehearsals <laughs> once in a while? I, know, I apologize. <sighs> All right, number one. Uh, the Bears did the Super Bowl yeah. shuffle back in 1985. What? Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> Someone in England must have noticed because as their soccer team was getting ready to play in the European Championship in 1988, they decided they should have a song too, and they enlisted the writing and producing trio behind some of huge hits. Uh, from groups like Banana Rama wow. and Rick Astley, and this is what they got. The song is called All the Way. Huh. Oh boy. Wow, I always said Super Bowl Shuffle was missing a Nautilus machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Steve Fuller. Oh. We're gonna get there if we do it right. Wow, this is way better. It's not a bad song, but no. the coach is distracting yeah. in the middle. He's really is not he's not selling it. Listen Worth noting here. they lost all three games in the group stage yeah. and got knocked out. Wow. Generally, if you're an athlete and you're asked to perform in some kind of a singing... Yeah. Not a good idea. ...group thing. Take a pass. This guy's an athlete? Yeah. Look at none, of them really, none of them really look like 
No, Jeez, they yeah, don't. Soccer players. They look like junior high school teachers. Yeah. This was, uh, I guess, performed by the, a guy who wrote songs for Rick Astley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they look fond and friendly, though. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of this all yeah. the way. But, like, this is pretty much the worst the video ever ball, made. Like they needed something to do with their hands. Wait a minute, is that where our producer got the idea for you to throw around Could that have football? Been. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> in your pro socks make, a, make, make the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do sports. That was great. Who was I the executive who came up with that? <laughs> I'd love to know. <laughs> Sports <laughs> with Pat Thomasulo. We'll have to cue that up again tomorrow. Uh, that's tonight at nine. <laughs> oh, do we still have that? Oh, sure we do. Yeah.